Ye shall pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church, and especially for the Anglican Communion, for our Sovereign Lord King Charles, for the ministers of God's holy word and sacraments, as well as archbishops and bishops and other pastors and curates, for the King's most honourable council, and for all the nobility and magistrates, that all and every of these in their several callings may serve truly and painfully to the glory of God and the edifying and governing of his people. Also, ye shall pray for the whole commons of this realm, that they may live in the true faith and fear of God and in brotherly charity one to another. Finally, let us praise God for all those which are departed out of this life in the faith of Christ and pray unto God that we may have grace to direct our lives after their good examples, that this life ended, we may be partakers with them of the glorious resurrection in the life everlasting. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Where there appeareth at these days great slackness and negligence of a great sort of people in resorting to the church there to serve God their heavenly Father, according to their most bounden duty, as also much uncomely and unreverent behavior of many persons in the same, when they be, there, be assembled, and thereby they may just fear arise of the wrath of God and his dreadful plagues, hanging over our heads for our grievous offence in this behalf, amongst other many and great sins which we daily and hourly commit before the Lord. Therefore, for the discharge of all our consciences and the avoiding of the common peril and plague hanging over us, let us consider what may be said out of God's holy book concerning this matter. Whereunder I pray you give good audience, for that it is of great weight and concerneth you all. Although the eternal and incomprehensible majesty of God, the Lord of heaven and earth, whose seat is heaven and the earth his footstool, cannot be enclosed in temples or houses made with man's hand, as is dwelling places able to receive or contain his majesty, accordingly as evidently declared of the prophet say, and by the doctrine of St. Stephen and St. Paul in the Acts of the Apostles, and where King Salmon, who builded unto the Lord the most glorious temple that ever was made, saith, who shall be able to build a meet or worthy house for him, if heaven and the heaven above all heavens cannot contain him, how much less can that which I have builded? And further confesseth, what am I that I should be able to build thee a house, O Lord? But yet for this purpose only it is made that thou mayest regard the prayer of thy servant and his humble supplication. Much less then be our churches meet dwelling places to receive the incomprehensible majesty of God and indeed the chief and special temples of God wherein he hath greatest pleasure and most delighteth to dwell and continue in are the bodies and minds of true Christians and the chosen people of God according to the doctrine of the Holy Scripture declareth in the first epistle to the Corinthians, Know ye not, saith St. Paul, that ye be the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God doth dwell in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him with God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which ye are. And again in the same epistle, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, dwelling in you, whom ye have given you of God, and that ye be not your own? For ye be dearly bought. Glorify ye now therefore God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And therefore, as our Saviour Christ teacheth, 
in the Gospel of St. John, they that worship God the Father in spirit and in truth, in what place soever they do it, worship Him aright. For such worshippers doth God the Father look for. For God is a spirit, and those which worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth, saith our Saviour Christ. Yet all this notwithstanding, the material church or temple is a place appointed as well by the usage and continual examples expressed in the Old Testament as in the New for the people of God to resort together unto, there to hear God's holy word, to call upon his holy name, to give him thanks for his innumerable and unspeakable benefits bestowed upon us, and duly and truly to celebrate his holy sacraments. In the unfeigned doing and accomplishing of the which standeth that true and right worshipping of God aforementioned. And the same church or temple is by the scriptures, both of the Old Testament and the New, called the house and temple of the Lord, for the peculiar service there done to his majesty by his people, and for the effectuous presence of his heavenly grace, wherewith he, by his said holy word, endureth his people, so there assembled. And to the said house or temple of God, at times by common order appointed, are all people that be godly, indeed bound with all diligent to resort, unless by sickness or other most urgent courses they be lettered therefrom. And all the saints so resorting thither ought with all quietness and reverence there to behave themselves in doing their bounden duty and service to Almighty God in the congregation of his saints, all which things are evident to be provided by God's holy word, as hereafter shall plainly appear. And first of all, I will declare by the Scriptures that it is called, as it is indeed, the house of God and the temple of the Lord. He that sweareth by the temple, saith our Saviour Christ, sweareth by it. And him that dwelleth therein, meaning God the Father, which he also expresseth plainly in the Gospel of St. John, saying, do not make the house of my father the house of merchandise. And in the book of the Psalms, the prophet David saith, I will enter into thine house. I will worship in thy holy temple in thy fear. And it is in almost infinite places of the scripture, especially in the prophets in the book of Psalms called the house of God or the house of the Lord. Sometime it is named the tabernacle of the Lord and sometime the sanctuary, that is to say the holy house or place of the Lord. And it is in likewise called the house of prayer, as Salmon, who builded the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem, doth oft call it in the house of the Lord, in the which the Lord's name should be called upon. An essay in the 56th chapter, My house shall be called the house of prayer amongst all nations, which text our Saviour Christ alleged in the New Testament as doth appear in three of the evangelists and in the parable of the Pharisee and the publican, which went to pray in which the parable of our Saviour Christ saith, they went up into the temple to pray. And Anna, the holy widow and prophetess, served the Lord in fasting and prayer in the temple night and day, and in the story of the Acts, it is mentioned how that Peter and John went up into the temple at the hour of prayer. And St. Paul praying in the temple at Jerusalem was wrapped in spirit and did see Jesus speaking unto him. And as in all convenient places, prayer may be used of the godly privately. So is it most certain that the church or temple is the due and appointed place for common and public prayer. Now that it is likewise the place of thanksgiving unto the Lord for his innumerable and unspeakable benefits bestowed upon us, appeareth most notably in the latter end of the Gospel of St. Luke, and at the beginning of the story of the Acts, where it is written that the apostles and the disciples, after the ascension of the Lord, continued with one accord daily in the temple, always praising and blessing God. And it is likewise declared in the first epistle to the Corinthians that the church is the due place appointed for the reverent use of the sacraments. It remaineth now to be declared that the church or temple is the place where the lively word of God and not man's inventions ought to be read and taught, and that the people are bound hither with all diligence to resort, and this proof likewise to be made by the scriptures as hereafter shall appear. In the story of the Acts of the Apostles, we read that Paul and Barnabas 
preached the word of God in the temples of the Jews at Salomon. And when they came to Antiochia, they entered on the Sabbath day into the synagogue or church and sat down. And after the lesson or reading of the law and the prophets, the ruler of the temple sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if any of you have any exhortation to make unto the people, say it. And so Paul, standing up and making silence with his hands, said, Ye men that be Israelites, and ye that fear God, give ear, and so forth, preaching to them a sermon out of the Scriptures, as there at large appeareth. And in the same story of the Acts, the seventeenth chapter, is testified how Paul preached Christ out of the Scriptures at Thessalonica. And in the fifteenth chapter, James the Apostle, in that holy council, an assembly of his Fellow apostles, saith Moses of old time, hath in every city certain that preached him in the synagogues or temples, where he is read every Sabbath day. By these places ye may see the usage of reading of the scriptures of the Old Testament. Among the Jews in their synagogues every Sabbath day, and sermons usually made upon the same, how much more than it is convenient that the scripture of God, and especially the gospel of our Saviour Christ, should be read and expounded to us, that be Christians in our churches, especially our Saviour Christ and his apostles, allowing his most godly and necessary usage, and by their examples confirming the same. It is written in the stories of the gospel in diverse places that Jesus went around about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. In which places is his great diligence in continual preaching and teaching of the people most evidently set forth. In Luke, he read how Jesus, according to his accustomed use, came into the temple and how the book of Essay the prophet was delivered him, how he read a text therein and made a sermon upon the same. And in the 19th is expressed how he taught daily in the temple. And as thus written in the 8th of John, Jesus came again early in the morning into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. And in the 18th of John, our Saviour testifieth before Pilate that he spake openly unto the world and that he always taught in the synagogue and in the temple whither all the Jews resorted and that secretly he spake nothing. And in St. Luke, Jesus taught in the temple and all the people came early in the morning unto him that they might hear him in the temple. Here ye see as well the diligence of our Saviour in teaching the word of God in the temple daily, and especially on the Sabbath days, as also the readiness of the people resorting altogether, and that early in the morning into the temple to hear him. The same example of diligence in preaching the word of God in the temple shall ye find in the apostles, and the people resorting unto them, Acts the fifth, how the apostles, although they had been whipped and scourged the day before, and by the high priest commanded that they should preach no more in the name of Jesus, yet the day following they entered early in the morning into the temple, and did not cease to teach and declare Jesus Christ. And in sundry other places of the story of the Acts, ye shall find like diligence, both in the apostles in teaching and in the people in coming to the temple to hear God's word. And it is testified in the first of Luke that when Zachary, the holy priest, the father to John the Baptist, did sacrifice within the temple, all the people stood without a long time praying. Such was their zeal and fervency at that time. And in the second of Luke appeareth what great journeys men, women, ye, and children took to come to the temple on the feast day, there to serve the Lord and especially the example of Joseph, the Blessed Virgin Mary, mother of our Saviour Christ and of our Saviour Christ himself, being yet but a child, whose examples are worthy of for us to follow. So that if we would compare our negligence in resorting to the house of the Lord there to serve him, to the diligence of the Jews in coming daily, very early, sometime great journeys to their temple, and when the multitude could be received within the temple, the fervent zeal that, that they had declared in standing long without and praying, we may justly in this comparison condemn our slothfulness and negligence, yea, plain contempt in coming to the Lord's house, standing so near unto us, so seldom and scarcely at noontime, so far is it from a great many of us to come early in the morning or give attendance without, who disdain to come into the temple, and yet we abhor the very name of the Jews when we hear it as of the most wicked and ungodly people. But it is to be feared that in this point we be far worse than the Jews, and that they shall rise at the day of judgment 
to our condemnation, who in comparison to them show such slackness and contempt in resorting to the house of the Lord, there to serve him according as we are of duty most bound. And besides this most horrible dread of God's just judgment in the great day, we shall not in this life escape his heavy hand and vengeance for this contempt of the house of the Lord and his due service in the same. According as the Lord himself threateneth in the first chapter of the prophet Agius, after this sort, because you have left my house desert and without company, saith the Lord, and ye have made haste every man to his own house, for this cause are the heavens stayed over you, though they should give no dew, and the earth is forbidden that it shall bring forth its fruit. And I have called drought upon the earth, and upon the mountains, and upon corn, and upon wine, and upon oil, and upon all things that the earth bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon beasts, and upon all things that men's hands labour for. Behold, if we be such worldlings, that we care not for the eternal judgments of God, which yet of all others are most dreadful and horrible, we shall not escape the punishment of God in this world by drought and famine, and the taking away of all worldly commodities, which we as worldlings seem only to regard and care for. Whereas on the contrary, if we would amend this fault of negligence, slothfulness and contempt of the house of the Lord and his due service there, and with diligence resort thither together to serve the Lord with one accord and consent in all holiness and righteousness before him, we have promises of benefits, both heavenly and worldly, wheresoever two or three be gathered in my name, saith our Saviour Christ, there am I in the middle of them. And what can be more blessed than to have our Saviour Christ amongst us? Or what again can be more unhappy or mischievous than to drive our Saviour Christ from amongst us and to leave a place for his and our most ancient and mortal enemy, the old dragon and serpent, Satan the devil, in the middle of us, in the second of Luke, it is written how the mother of Christ and Joseph, when they had long sought Christ, whom they had lost and could find him nowhere, that at the last they found him in the temple, sitting in the middle of the doctors. So if we lack Jesus Christ, that is to say, the saviour of our souls and bodies, we shall not find him in the marketplace or in the good halls, much less in the alehouse or tavern amongst good fellows, as they call them. So soon as we shall find him in the temple, the Lord's house, amongst the teachers and preachers of his word, where indeed he is to be found. And as concerning worldly commodities, we have a sure promise of our Saviour Christ. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and the righteousness thereof, and all these things shall withal be given unto you. And thus we have in the first part of this homily declared by God's word that the temple or church is the house of the Lord, for that the service of the Lord is teaching and hearing of his holy word, calling upon his holy name, giving thanks to him for his great and innumerable benefits and due ministerings of his sacraments is there used. And it is likewise declared already by the scriptures how all godly and Christian men and women ought at times appointed with diligence to resort unto the house of the Lord, there to serve him and to glorify him as he is most worthy and mo we most bound, to whom be all glory and honour, world without end. Amen. Amen.